Hi, I'm Ms. Mullins. And I'm Mrs. Cooper. Today we are going through a quick review of the question types you will see on the Park Math Assessment. Let's get started by looking at the difference between multiple choice and multiple response. Ooh, watch me, watch me. Multiple choice items have four answer choices. Notice the circle before each answer. Watch as I choose an answer. Now watch me change my answer. Easy, right? Let's look at a multiple select question. Multiple select questions have a square next to each box. I can choose multiple answers. Watch as I check the boxes. Hmm, if I want to change my answer, I just unclick the box. Hint, circles are in front of multiple choice items, which means you can only choose one answer. Squares are in front of multiple select answers, which means you can choose more than one answer. The next feature is the drag and drop. For these types of questions, you select the answer and drag and drop the response into the answer box. Ooh, watch me, watch me. I select and hold. Then I will drag the number to where I think it goes. Oop, she made a mistake. So I select and drag and drop it into the correct answer box. Now we are ready for some real fun with the equation editor. Basic equation editor allows for math only responses. Open response equation editor allows for math plus text. Let's practice both and see some cool features that you can use. Ooh, watch me, watch me. There is a blue triangle here that indicates additional tools. If we hover over each button, it will tell us what it means. Let's try to use a few. Look at the buttons on the right. If I want to enter a fraction, I will click the fraction button. I'm going to enter the fraction 5 6 by typing a 5 and using the directional arrow key to go down to enter a 6. Now I want to try with a mixed number. To clear my board, I hit the trash can. It will clear everything. I hover over the mixed number key and I'm going to enter the mixed number 3 and 4 fifths. To do so, I use the arrows. I type a 3, I hit the over to the right, and enter a 4, and then I click the down arrow to enter a 5. My final answer is 3 and 4 fifths and is numbers only. To do an open response equation editor, it takes math plus text. If I look on the toolbar on the side, there are math symbols, there are relations to use with equations and inequalities, and there are geometry symbols. I am going to enter an answer that requires math plus text. Here I'm going to type in an exponent. I click the power button. I am going to enter 3 to the fifth power. I use the arrows to type in a 3 and hit the over arrow to type in a 5. 3 to the fifth power. If I need to go back, I click the undo button. If I want to make it 3 to the first power, I replace it with a 1. This box also accepts text. I am going to type 3 to the first pizzas. There are two hints to keep in mind when using the equation editor. The first hint, if the question states enter only an expression, this is a math only answer. No text. Hint number two, if the problem says to enter your answer and explanation, it is an open response and requires math plus text. We are making great progress. Let's review fill in the blank items. Ooh, watch me, watch me. I'm going to type three fourths as my answer. When I do it on my keyboard, it won't let me. It says invalid input. Since this type does not accept fractions, I will convert it to a decimal and type in 75 hundredths. Let's look at inline choice, also known as drop down menus. Let me show you what I mean. Ooh, watch me, watch me. Click the arrow and choose a response. To change my answer, I'll click on the arrow again and choose a different response. Hi, I'm Mrs. Cooper. Now that we have reviewed question types with Ms. Mullins, let's look at an interactive graph you may encounter on Park. This will be similar to graph paper or number lines that you use in math class from time to time. Ooh, watch me, watch me. On the park assessment, you may be asked to create a histogram and or bar graph. Let's try one. Look as I click and drag. Ooh, 
If I make a mistake, I can re-click and move. The next question type is an interactive coordinate plane. Ooh, watch me, watch me. Watch me as I graph several points. If I make a mistake, I can erase that point by clicking it again. Look as I add a point and then click it to make it go away. The same process works on a number line. It could be a drag and drop like before or a hot spot. Watch as I click the right answer. Tss, the hot spot. Oops, she made a mistake. To change my answer, I go to the correct hot spot and change the location. Let's practice graphing a solution to an inequality on a number line. Ooh, watch me, watch me. It's a two-step process. Step one, click from the choices in the box below the number line. See how it showed up on the number line? Step two, stretch and shrink to cover all the values. Let's practice graphing a line for your answer. Ooh, watch me, watch me. To graph a line, I'll click here and then here. See how they connect? Watch, and I'll make a change on the line. Here we are going to go over something for 8th grade and high school level park only. So if this is not for you, you may fast forward or continue watching. Okay, this is similar to graphing a line, but with two lines. Ooh, watch me, watch me. For line S, I'll click on S in the left hand side and then choose two points to create that line. Notice how the color of the line matches the line S indicator on the left. To graph line T, I must choose over on the left to graph line T and select two points to represent line T. Again, the color matches the line that I've selected on the left hand side. To make a change to T, I'll select T and then I'll select a new point to change my line. Easy, right? We're almost done. The second to last one is how to graph a polygon. Let's try one. Ooh, watch me, watch me. I will now demonstrate how to graph a polygon. First, you must connect all the vertices or corners of the shape. Once all are highlighted with a blue point, I will then click Close Shape to identify my polygon. The last type, it's for high school level park only. This type is how to graph different functions. Ooh, watch me, watch me. This type of graph is used to graph different types of functions. The first step in using this graph is choosing the type of function that you are creating from the menu of choices on the left hand side. I know this is a quadratic, so I will choose this option from the left hand side. A random quadratic will appear on the graph. The vertex will always be plotted at 0, 0 to begin. That point will remain the vertex no matter where it is moved on the graph. Watch as I move this point all over the coordinate plane. The biggest thing to remember is that whatever is represented originally at 0, 0 represents the vertex. All finished. Ready for park, right? Wait, there's one more thing. So here's the deal. You're gonna ace it for real. If you just try your best when taking the test. There are a couple of points I need you to know. Use your scratch paper to start the flow. When you get stuck, reread. And look for tools that you may need. No matter how hard it gets, don't give in. Your attitude is what will count as a win.